Today I wanted to make a guide, basically just have a general idea for how you can improve as a healer. I kind of feel like I just have a, a factory of information and I, I really don't know how to share it, I guess. Uh, when people ask me questions, I feel like I can answer questions and whatnot. Um, so I started thinking, you know, how am I able to get this information out to people? And the first thing I, you know, the first idea I kind of came up with is, you know, what did I do to feel like I started to improve as a healer? Um, so I, I started kind of taking notes here about, you know, I guess expansions where I feel like I started doing things uh, to kind of make me feel like I started to get better and better. Um, and then kind of I also uh, I also just decided to put in a few notes here that there's a lot of stuff here. Um, I kind of feel like are important and I want to I want to really stress the importance of some of these things because I you know I feel like these are definitely big steps on improving how to be a good healer I guess we're gonna go ahead and just get started on it you know in TBC I started playing healer and I actually clicked my buttons and I also clicked my party frames um, so in TBC the first thing I started doing was keybinding my abilities this is obviously uh, I would say for the most most part a no-brainer at this point. I, I would imagine that if you're trying to improve as a healer, you already have keybinds. Um, and if you don't, you obviously want to get some. And if you're curious about keybinds, I have an old video on YouTube about keybinds called See Do's and See Don'ts that you should probably take a look at. Another thing I started using in the Burning Crusade was focus macros. If you're not using focus macros, uh, I would definitely recommend you do it. I noticed that some people, I've even heard of some people still not using a focus to this day. Um, and I guess their the, either I guess their argument was I have arena one two three, um, but even if you don't have arena one two three and you don't use a focus, get a focus on man. You're gonna you see so much more. You could see buffs, you could see debuffs, and you could also just see cast bars of important see, uh, important people. You know, for example, you know you could focus someone who wants to CC you a lot. You could focus someone who's kind of setting up the kills. You could you could recognize when they have those uh, big damaging ability buffs up. Uh, but f focus are really really important and almost every single healer has an interrupt now so you probably want to do that for focus interrupts i think every healer has a kick i guess druids don't spec into it uh, i was gonna say besides disc but druids don't really spec into it so definitely focus macros um focus focus in general i mean you got focus purge you got focus kick you got focus crowd control something that you want to be doing this is this is obviously pretty basic stuff but everyone is different rating and maybe not everyone has it. But this, this is important, guys. Definitely want to do this. Um, in the Burning Crusade, that is when I originally started learning how to uh, pillar hug. And this is, uh, this is obviously something that is still very uh, important to this day. So obviously, you know, me running around this pillar right now, line of sighting, you're able to avoid people. I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but if you kind of hold down your uh, right click, you're able to easily just kind of, you know, turn your mouse over and over and over again and stay kind of, you know, close to this pillar as opposed to, I guess, like, I'm not sure if you, you know, keyboard turn. It's not a bad option, I guess, because it actually doesn't feel that bad, but you probably shouldn't keyboard turn. Overall, it's going to be a little bit less efficient. And positioning is obviously very important. Pillar cutting is still very important if you're trying to avoid CC, uh, if you're trying to get away from melee, literally sometimes on Resto Shaman, when you're in Ghost Wolf, this is the best way to do it. Like, you know, you're avoiding a warrior, they go this way, you go that way. As I'm doing this, I feel like a lot of this stuff seems very silly, but you got to understand this is the stuff that I learned 20 years ago. So if you're just starting a healer, uh, this is some stuff that you can practice, uh, just simple positioning stuff, things like that. Um, I noticed that uh, in Burning Crusade, damage was very important as a healer. I did it as priest, I did it as... Uh, I did it as Resto Druid, I did it as uh, Shaman, and this is actually still very important to this day. I would say most classes as healer have ways to help damage. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but you should definitely be trying to recognize uh, when you can or should be throwing damage out as a healer. Um, <clears throat> I would say one of the healers that's a little bit weaker is probably Resto Druid, but you, whenever you have that opportunity... Especially in solo shuffle, because damage matters a lot in solo shuffle. You should be throwing damage out. This is uh, something that I kind of learned later in time, but I have it kind of as a note here. But this is this is really really helpful. So I'm gonna log on to a different healer real quick. But you can have like target of target macros, and it is super helpful for being able to actually deal damage. 
um, because you can be healing your friendly target while dealing damage to the enemy that they are attacking. So let me just go ahead and find a macro example of this. Power and Solace. So you feel like you don't Solace enough on Dis Priest. Every single time it is off cooldown, you can be targeting your your party your party members. You can't do it if you're targeting yourself, but you could just press Solace. You don't need to worry about who it's going on. You just kind of get in that that rhythm where it's like, oh, you know, Solace is off CD. I can just press it. You don't have to target an enemy. You know, think about who's in range, whatever, whatever, whatever. It just makes it very simple. So at target macros are very helpful. All right. So these are some of the the key things that I learned in Burning Crusade. Keep in mind, some of this is very basic. Uh, if you don't, if you're not interested, that's okay. So moving into Wrath of the Lich King, the first thing I did, and I actually remember specifically in pre-patch doing this, was I keybinded targeting friendly players. This was a huge change for me. I feel like if you're clicking your party members as uh, a healer, it's bad, okay? You're you're moving your mouse to an area where you can't control it because a lot of a lot of the movements that you do is literally from your mouse. Like, you know, sometimes I use double mouse click to move. Sometimes I use I use my camera or sorry, my right click to kind of move around like this. Um, and one of the main reasons I actually did this is because when I was learning how to pillar kite position, if I had to change my target, think about what happens here for a second. I'm trying to I'm trying to pillar right now. OK, now I got to Now I got to click my target over here. Guess what? I can't hold down my right click. I can't continue to move smoothly around this pillar. I got to go over here. I got to click this target. I got to move my my mouse back on the screen in case I want to use a master spell, in case I want to target an enemy, in case I got to do whatever with my mouse. So clicking your party frames, it's slower and it's bad. I promise you that I will press my keybind to click my party frame before you get over there and click it with your mouse. Um, this is very, very important. Uh, so I personally use the F keys in order to click my party frames. I don't have big, I don't have big hands. It's not, uh, it's not something that I have. I have very small hands. This is my F1. This is my one. Um, when I press my F keys, I, I do like a little, little hand. What's the word I'm looking here? Like a little hand stretch to press these. Um, you know what I mean? You can see here. Now, another, another option that people have that I've heard of is that, they like using their mouse button. And it's literally just a simple scroll up, scroll down, middle mouse. That's another option that people liked for um, using their target keybinds. You know, scroll up, party one, scroll down, party two, middle mouse, target self. Uh, that's an option that you can use. Um, if you don't like where the F keys are placed on this keyboard, try and find a, a small, like, you know, keyboard where they are directly over your keys. That's how I excuse me, that's how I originally learned because I was actually on a laptop. Another option you can have is you can get a MMO mouse where uh, you have buttons on the side and you can literally just have party one, party two, party three, whatever. Uh, bind your party members. I'm telling you, it will make a huge difference. Faking interrupts is something that I focused on a lot as a resto shaman in Wrath of the Lich King because guess what? You had to fake interrupts. Uh, that is something that you should be focusing on. You need to you need to be aware of when interrupts are available, and you also need to be aware on faking them. So what I did in this expansion, and this is something that you could do as well, is I actually I have multiple omni bars now, and one is literally just set for only interrupts. It is the only thing I have is interrupts here. So when I want to get a casted heal off, the first thing I do is my teammates are dying. I glance down here and I see if interrupts are available. So if nothing is showing up here, guess what? Interrupts are available. You should have a good idea of how many interrupts are uh, like available at the start of the game. Let's just say you're playing against Ro Lock Rogue. If you look down here and there's no spell lock and there's no kick, uh, guess what? There's two kicks available. You're faking. You know what I mean? It's just got to be it's got to be hand in hand. When you go against an enemy team, as soon as those gates open or as soon as you're in arena prep, you think to yourself, okay, they have two kicks. Every time you look down here, you're looking for two kicks. If there's not two kicks on CD, you're faking. On top of that, you should always try and change your fake pattern. You can fake quickly, you can fake late. Just don't don't be uh don't be the same person. If you're always faking late, they'll never kick you. So sometimes you wanna, you know, you wanna fake early. Uh you wanna you wanna try and switch that uh switch that up. Another thing that I started doing in Wrath of the Lich King, because I started playing um, a bit of Priest and Paladin in Wrath of the Lich King, is that I made Dispel Macros. Dispelling party member macros, I feel like this is something that not everyone uses today. And if you click, this is especially going to be bad. But if you have to click to Dispel, and then click to Dispel, um, 
Dispel Party macros are incredibly, incredibly useful. I think they were probably more useful when um, there was no cooldown on Dispel. Uh, but I still think that they are very useful today. Your DPS will... They will, uh, they will love you with quick dispels. I actually used to get complimented back in the day for how quick my dispels were. Go ahead and give myself a nice uh, little pat on the back there. But definitely something where, you know, you want to be able to dispel polys fast, Nova's fast, Fear's fast, you know, Dot's fast, whatever you want to do. And you want to be able to do it without having to switch targets, you know what I mean? I'm healing this guy over here. This mage wants to come over, Frost Nova, Frost Nova me, Poly me. Imagine having, imagine this scenario right now, okay? This guy's a mage, he wants to come over here and Nova me, poly me, I'm healing this guy. Okay, guess what? I have to click my frame, press dispel, run out of line of sight, and then click my frame again to heal this guy. I've actually never even experienced thinking about anything as traumatic as that. That is so awful. So right now, we literally just press our Dispel button, we move out of line, and we continue, you know, with our healing business. You know, we're healing this guy right here. He's getting absolutely destroyed. This guy gets Polymorph for queuing into Rogue Mage. You know, the last thing I want to do is click this guy, press Dispel, click this guy, start healing again. Awful. You don't want to do it. Um, so Dispel macros are really good. So in Cataclysm, Cataclysm is when I feel like I really just ascended into one of my best versions of myself uh, because I was I was basically doing things that people weren't doing back then. And that was Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. I felt like I was just the sheer god back in the day, the, the wind sheer god. Arena 1, 2, 3 macros are amazing. I will admit that I personally started using Arena 1, 2, 3 macros originally on Shaman. And that kind of uh, allowed me to easily use them on all my other healers. In which case, you know, like I use Incap 1, 2, 3 on my Monk. I use Root 1, 2, 3, Clone 1, 2, 3 on my Druid. Uh, I use Mind Control 1, 2, 3 on my Priest. Um, on my Paladin, I don't use 1, 2, 3 macros. Uh, what else do we have? What other class? On Evoker, I use uh, Sleep 1, 2, 3. And I feel like um, it's very, very helpful. Um and then on top of that, I started using Arena 123. I hate clicking, guys. So I I targeted, I, I made binds to target friendlies and I made binds to target enemy. I hate using my mouse. I feel like it's so inefficient. I, I, I'm going to be honest, man. It's pet peeve of mine when I see people either tab target or click. I, I feel like it's just bad. But whatever. Even some of my teammates do it. I feel like it's bad. And then also I started using Focus 123 so I could constantly swap my focus to have a better idea of uh, what's happening. Um in a game, you know what I mean? I'm targeting a mage, you know, boom, now I'll target the warlock and I'll, I'll, I'll lock him down with shears and purges, focus purges up like that. Let me go ahead and talk about this for a little bit. So uh, arena one, two, three macros, I'll, I'll give you, I'll talk about what I started doing originally is, so I move with QWE and I know this isn't super common, okay? I know some people move with WASD, uh, that's fine. You know, I'm just giving you an idea here. Um, so that, that actually made like my A, S, and D. This was turn left. This was backpedal. This was turn right. So it was a really, really easy transition for me to make these three keybinds that were absolutely useless target one, two, three. This is one. This is two. This is three. Now guess what? Shift. Sh shear one. Shear two. Shear three. It was very, very simple to make those uh, keybinds that kind of like correspond with each other. You know what I mean? A, S, D, target one, two, three. Shift ASD, uh, Shear 1, 2, 3. Alt ASD is Clone 1, 2, 3. You know, you could even do Control ASD. So having those, like, those ma or those keybinds that kind of, like, I guess, mesh up felt really, really good. Um, like I said, another option you could do is get one of those uh, MMO mice, if you could afford it, uh, and using, you know, the side buttons literally just for targeting and interrupting. Like, you know, you could... If you don't have one right now, it's just three free binds that you could use. And then my focus one, two, three is control one, two, three. I felt like these were a little bit of a stretch, so I didn't really, you know. But yeah, if you if you move with QWE and your ASD are just kind of like, you know, useless, or maybe you move with uh, w, uh, WAD, like S should be backpedal, you can make it Q, QSE as your target one, two, three, things like that. And then you could do shift S, shift Q, shift S, shift E. Um, if you already just keybinded those, you know, I don't really have, uh, you know, great suggestions outside of the MMO mouse. So yeah, I do think that was very important. I, I personally feel like I am 
very efficient when it comes to targeting enemies that helps me deal damage helps me get crowd control um you know i feel like i'm very great at arena one two three and i'm gonna be honest man and i i feel like uh i feel like some of my teammates on my team don't use arena one two three macros in terms of interrupts and i feel like i give my teammates a very hard time like yo did you have kick for that well you know if they're targeted on this guy and they're focused on this guy and this guy used interrupt guess what it's going to be hard for them to, to use an interrupt. You know what I mean? There's that there's that third man that is kind of not being paid attention to. And that's when that that interrupt arena three becomes really important. Same with in caps, you know, same with uh, I, I guess I'm saying for my uh, for my person, you know, same with in caps on my misweaver. When I fight against mages on my misweaver and they're in stealth, you know what I'm doing? I'm spamming in cap arena, whatever position he's in. So when he comes out of stealth and he's casting a polymorph, I'm spamming Arena 1 in cap or Arena 2 in cap or Arena 3 in cap, and it's it's huge. Um, you know, them getting that folk, that uh, first sheep of the game, as opposed to not getting the first sheep of the game, could set up all the momentum. Another thing I want to talk about is um, in Cataclysm, I started using, started doing like an action bar overhaul. And I think this is, I think this is really important. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to log on my evoker to, to show you a little bit. But I feel like having your action bar set up in a specific way is very important. So as a healer, my main concern about when I set up my action bars is having all of my cooldowns, defensive cooldowns in the same place. I couldn't think of anything worse than having, you know, defensive cooldowns spread out all over your action bars. So when I set up my evoker here, guess what? All of my cooldowns, same place. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. And then, you know, obviously these are a little bit over to the right. I'm not a huge fan of that. But not only that, I also set up my action bars to have all of my stops in the same place. And what I mean by that is, guess what? When someone's casting, I look right in this area. I have a kick. I have a knock. I have a knock up. I know that, you know, I have a sleep. I know that these are all of the abilities I have to prevent people from casting spells. And I think this is... um. I feel like this is this is very, very important for just, you know, I think looking at your action bar is bad. The more you look at your action bar, I feel like the more time you're wasting, the less you're actually seeing. So when I look down, I want to see everything that I want uh, at the same time. My teammates are dying. I look down. I see every single cooldown I have. I, I'm looking at health bars. I'm looking at cast bars. I'm looking at positioning. Um, and I'm able to do that really, really easily. You know, I have... Uh, I have a warlock or a mage who's trying to cast or and I'm trying to stop something. I look down, I have kick, I have knock, I have knock up, I have sleep. I, I see everything right off the bat. Um, and I think that's I think that's really, really important. I don't know if it's exactly the same with my shaman. My shaman is a little bit uh, old school. Let me go ahead and take a look here. Everything in terms of defensive cooldowns are huge though. Like definitely, definitely want to make sure that you see everything right off the bat. I imagine all my cooldowns are once again, you know, right in this area of my screen. Uh, my sheer and my... Uh, my grounding are a little bit far away from each other, but you know, lasso's there. Um, yeah, I guess my, my ground's also up here too, but yeah. Just uh, definitely something that I think was uh, very important. And then in Cataclysm, I started streaming and that was able to help me VOD review. And considering that I wanna do VOD reviews for the community and considering if you wanna improve, you should definitely consider just throwing a stream on. It just, it will record your games for you. I'm pretty sure you could do it on YouTube, you could do it on Twitch, whatever you want. And then I'm also going to be doing VOD reviews for people. So if you want to improve your own gameplay and you also want me to be able to uh, review your gameplay, definitely give it uh, some consideration because sometimes like sometimes I'll literally be playing off stream. We'll, doing, we'll be doing practicing war games. And I'm like, fuck, I wish I had the VOD for that. Like it is super helpful. So moving into Miss the Pandaria here. Um, this was actually a big one. Mop, Mop changed the game of WoW. So... There was no such thing in Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King as a go. No one said, yo, we have a go, let's win the game. Um, Mop started the go era, and it really kind of uh, wired my brain on what can I do to help my team succeed. So this is, this is something we're going to be talking about down here in the notes, but uh, when you're playing a comp or you're queuing solo shuffle, the first thing that you should do is understand what uh crowd control your teammates have and how you can play off of their crowd control to help contribute uh so for example you know 
one IQ threes with Trill and Sam, and you know, I'm playing Evoker. If Sam is stunning someone and silencing someone and Trill is kidding someone, I want to try and sleep the third person. You always want to try and get that cross CC. If you're a resto shaman and let's just say let's just say you're playing KFC, random comp, warrior hunter, okay? Your hunter's going in, scatter trapping the healer, your warrior is storm bolting this guy. You want to try and, you know, maybe get a root on the third person. If they're, you know, a melee, you can get a hex on the third person, you can get a lightning lasso on the third person, but cross CC is key. You want to have that one, two, three, everybody's locked down uh type situation where where you're really contributing, and that's when you're um that's when your crowd control is going to be the most effective because everyone isn't able to do anything in that situation. And it's, it's just what we like to call a 3v1. So at the same sense of how you learned how to be a, a part of kill windows, you also need to learn how to prevent kill windows. So this is obviously a little bit trickier one, trickier one as this is a overall, like an overall healer guide. So how can you do it? You know, so let's just quick example. When we queue against resto druids, on our frosty k comps and we want to grip them in the first thing they do is they go in travel form and they they leap the grip you know what i mean that's something where they're trying to they're trying to counterplay deathing blinds uh you know pre-barriering pre-earthening as a evoker i'm not really sure what you can try and do you can maybe you know grip people when cc is coming you can maybe uh deep breath incoming crowd control uh there's a lot of things that you can do to prevent goes and this is something where you know, maybe, uh, maybe you guys can ask questions, not right now. Uh, maybe you guys can come in my stream and ask questions like, yo, I'm losing to this comp. I'm this healer. What can I try and do to help me? And that's something that I would absolutely love to answer. I really want to advocate people asking questions in my chat. You got to try and recognize how you can be a part of kills and how you can help prevent kills. Um, very, very important thing. So knowledge is key in this game. You got to understand how every single class works. So you know how to, uh, help and prevent. Uh, so I started streaming full time in uh, Cataclysm. I was able to VOD review all of my stuff every single time I lose a game. You know, do VOD was an emote for a while. Um, it just it just helps. Like if you want to get better at the game, there's no better way to be able to you know look at your own game. And I, I could literally watch myself play and be like, wow, this guy freaking sucks. Like there's always ways to improve on. And then in MOP communication and rotating defensives like started to get really important you know what i mean where it's like oh you know you're gonna live the next go with your trinket and your cds i'm gonna live the next go with my trinket and my cds and that's really where uh that's really where like communication and rotating uh started to be really really important and i will say overall communication as a healer is just unbelievably important it goes a long way to not only let your teammates know like yo we're in trouble but to also say yo we're safe like I, th I think that is under I think that is undervalued information as a healer. And obviously, if you guys are shufflers, you're not going to be able to do this. But uh, try and practice also letting your teammates know when they're safe, as opposed to just saying we're dying, you know, uh, throw that out there, because hearing that as a DPS is like, oh, we're safe. Like, OK, this is great. Like, I'm going to try and pay more attention to offense right now and not defense. And it can kind of help secure kills. Or if you're saying, if they're taking a ton of damage, and you're like, you're safe, I got you, I got you. They're not going to like panic, use defensive cooldowns. And if you die, be like, my bad, bro. Like, I thought I had you there. That's a live and learn situation. So moving uh, through TBC into Wrath and the Cat and a Mop, I feel like from Mop moving forward, uh, we're kind of just in the same type of expansion. I, I don't really feel like I was able to, you know, kind of like leapfrog ahead and do like a ton of things that I felt like were unbelievably important. Uh, I feel like so it's more or less just like improving on the skills that I've learned earlier. Uh, there's always something to learn. So now I have a, a few notes here just for, you know, just for healers out there. Uh, someone asked me why mouse over healing uh, is bad. To me, mouse over healing is literally the same as clicking. You're just this is the difference. That's it. The movements on your mouse are still exactly the same. You're moving them over to your to your you know target frames. It, it's going to be equally as bad. Uh, in PvE, it's a different story, but in PvP, I wouldn't recommend it. So one thing that I, I wanted to mention here is that I always played other classes, and playing other classes is great just to understand what screws you over. You know, nothing nothing uh, helps you learn more than playing other classes. Obviously, if you can't do this, you can't do this. But obviously, a really, really good tool for understanding. I'm actually going to move this up here. But understanding every class is like, it, it, it is just the best thing you can do this is something that at like high rating i would say everyone understands uh but at lower rating you know the last thing you want to do is 
I, I hate using the same uh, representations over and over. So let me just try and pick something random off the top of my head. I just lost to a boomkin. Uh, why did I lose to that boomkin? What happened? You know? And it's like, okay, well, they cc my healer. It was root beam. How can I counter root beam? I'm a hunter. Oh, wow. I could freedom out of, I could freedom him out of the root, get him out of the beam. I can use my roar sacrifice on his incarnation on the person he's killing so he can't crit, uh, so on and so forth. Just understanding every class and understanding how to counter those classes is really, really important. So, for example, uh, when you play Evoker, you learn how much roots counter you. And then when you're playing against an Evoker, you know, you could be like, yo, guys, put random roots on this Evoker. It screws him over really hard. You could be a Dis Priest. You could drop a Mind Tendrils or a Void Tendrils on him and be like, I know that one screwed him over, man. Like, you, you could feel really good about that. You know, when you play Resto Druid, you'd be like, wow, these purges are really obnoxious. And then when you play a comp without a Resto Druid, you'd be like, yo, purges screw this Resto Druid over really hard. So you get a, you get a really good idea of like how uh, you can you can hurt other classes. This is obviously very important as a healer. Uh, you should be tracking not only your cooldowns, but your your teammates cooldowns. And you, when you're in a position where they have no cooldowns, you have no cooldowns, no trinkets are available. This is something that you need to immediately communicate obviously this doesn't work in shuffle but you'd be like okay we have no cooldowns we need to run like we need to get out of here the next crowd control we are going to lose we need to be set up in a position where we can try and avoid that uh obviously very very um very very important information to to let your teammates know and ahead of time you know what i mean if you let your teammates no late or you don't say anything at all it's going to be very very easy to lose and be like wow we had nothing there you know we should have ran this is something that i actually think is huge i think this is something that every single person should be doing especially in shuffle is in arena prep every single time you get into a game and if you're doing shuffle you need to do it with your teammates as well you need to look at the comp you're playing against and immediately think to yourself how is this team going to beat us? You're playing against, uh, you know, you're playing against Hunter or Warrior. The Hunter wants to push in for traps. The Warrior has a fear. They have Storm Bolts. You need to think about how they are going to try and win the game and what you can do to try and avoid it. And this might sound really simple, but putting the putting the thought out there when you're in the arena prep, as opposed to as soon as the game starts and, you know, CC is flying at you, damage is flying at you, uh, it's huge. And in the other sense, if you're a shuffle, um, and you have teammates on your team with, you know, the, the classes are shuffling every round. How can I help my teammates land a kill here? And what do I need to do? Um, things that you want to recognize are, you know, are you playing a comp where it's kind of uh, it's kind of offensive? You know, what crowd control should be you be looking for from your teammates to try and start helping with damage or helping with CC? Are you playing with squishy classes? Do you want to play more defensive? But you want to be putting all of this thought in, in arena prep, as soon as you get in that game. Um, how do I help my team offensively and defensively? You should be thinking that immediately. This is this is just a random note here. Uh, help harm macros, very, very useful for saving keybinds. Um, I'll just give you a quick example of one I use on my shaman. This one right here is literally healing wave and lightning bolt. Like, you know, if I target a friendly, I cast healing wave. If I target an enemy, I cast lightning bolt. It, it can't get any more simple than that. Super useful macros for, for uh, saving keybinds. Uh, after you lose a game, communicate with your team on what can be improved on. Obviously you wanna do this in not a dickhead way. Like, oh wow, we can, uh, you know, we cannot be shit and, you know, use a kick. You know, I give my teammates a very, really hard, I give my teammates a really hard time about kicks. I'm not going to lie. Like, yo, um, we got to do better. You know, if we have kick available for that, we need to stop it. You know, just don't be a dick about it. Uh, and understand that, you know, you're also part of the problem. Like, you know, I, I feel like if I ever lose a game as a healer, any game that we lose, I could always do something better. I could be in a better spot. I could use cooldowns differently. I could have communicated better. Um, but communication after a game uh, don't make it your normal to be queuing with people and you lose a game and you're just mic muted till the next game. Be like, wow, that was a, that was a tough game. Um, you know, maybe we should have ran during their defensive cooldowns. Uh, maybe we should have tried to all in. Maybe we could have put our crowd control on someone else. Uh, yeah, this is obviously not something that is going to help in shuffle, but something that you want to make, uh, the norm. This is, uh, this is something as well, I guess it kind of goes in with communication, is whenever you lose, you should try and figure out why you lost. You shouldn't just lose and be like, oh, that sucks, next game. If you want to improve, understanding why you lost 
is going to be a big reason for that, like one of the biggest reasons. And that's why recording your gameplay is actually really huge because you can go back and you could take a look at it. You could understand that a teammate, uh, sorry, an enemy popped a CD you didn't realize. You can understand that maybe uh, you feel like you were on the wrong uh, target. You could understand that maybe, um, you know, you trinketed and spirit linked at the same time your your demon hunter trinketed and blurred and be like oh wow we we screwed up there we overlapped um we overlapped our cooldowns which gave us uh, you know less time overall so definitely vod reviewing and analyzing why you lost is really really important uh someone asked for me to just kind of talk about if they were first time healing right now what healers are best i would say it's evoker arjun and disc priest uh these are probably the healers that are going to be the most successful and least frustrating for you now, what I will say is I think these are very important add-ons to, you know, specifically my gameplay, and I think that you should probably use them as well. So the first one is Omni CD. I think Omni CD is unbelievably important. Omni CD is going to show all of your teammates CDs. You can put them wherever you want, but if uh, if you look at the way I have my add-on set up is I, I put them right here. I don't care about seeing their name. I have them right here. So when you're playing, uh, when you're playing with your teammates and you know that he's got Vanish of Agent Cloak, this not or seeing like all these on CD kind of goes like hand in hand with like, oh, we have no cooldowns. We need to run. You know, it's very important for you to track their CDs as much as it is to track your CDs. So Omni CD, obviously very important. Big debuffs is also very important. So, for example, uh, this is what big debuffs does is it kind of highlights, uh, excuse me, it kind of uh, highlights the more important crowd control. And this is really important for understanding when you need to dispel if these are polymorphs, if these are fears, if these are novas, if these are coils. Uh, it allows you to recognize that much easier. And right now, you see this leg sweep. Boom. I know that my rogue is going to be in trouble here. He's in a leg sweep. I'm going to, without even without even knowing, uh, this, this was yesterday, without even knowing what's happening right now, I see this leg sweep. I can guarantee the first thing I'm going to do is run over and grip my rogue. I see he's in that. Boom. Ran over, gripped him. It just, it, it immediately helps you recognize when your teammates need to get out of CC or when they're in CC that is troubling. Uh, also shows you if they get interrupted, which is very, very nice. Omni bar is obviously really, really important. Uh, you should absolutely be tracking your enemy CDs and your uh, enemy kicks. So if you want to see uh, kind of something funny here about all the stuff that I, t I actually track, it's going to look really overwhelming, but not all of this is popping up at the same time. So this is this is my Omni bar. Turns out tracking stuff in this game is important. So obviously I have a setup here over here. This is what I like to call setup CC Omnibar. This is my interrupt Omnibar and this is my general cooldown Omnibar. Obviously really important. Like this is one of those ones where I look down at a quick glance and I'm like, oh, you know, he's got uh, he's got incarn in five seconds. He's got he's got berserk coming up. Oh, that's the same thing. He's got, you know, whatever. He's got death grip. He can grip me in. He's got blinding light, whatever, blinding sleep. And then this is the one where I uh I try and track interrupts, and I have the one over here where it's like, oh, shit, they have like a stun silence, they have a hodgeblind, things like that. Uh, so Omnibar is really, really important. S Arena is one that is uh, also very good. You could just kind of test and, or, sorry, you can move this around. You could see enemies uh, diminishing returns. It's obviously a very uh, important part of Arena. And then finally, Weak Auras, man. This is, this is just the absolute most important thing you could ever do, and... It's, this is going to go hand in hand with how you can improve your gameplay as uh, a player. And it's going to help you understand why you lose games. But this is just the standard Mez Dragonflight Weak R package. And look look at how much stuff is here. You know what I mean? All of these things are important on how you can lose games. Okay? I cannot explain to you how important this Weak R is. So if you go to my stream and you type in exclamation WA. Exclamation WA enemy cd weak cars it's going to take you right here you, you just need it you know you need to know you need to know when this stuff is you is used to help you understand when you're going to take damage how you can counter damage and if you lose you know why you lost because doom Wins was popped thunder sword was popped explosive shot you know touch of the magi dark extension uh dragon rage things like that these are all very very important um so yeah i mean that's kind of what it comes down to uh I hope you got some sort of information out of this. Uh, obviously, this is a overall healer guide. I can't tell you how to play your healer specifically. I do have guides out for a lot of healers out there that you're more than welcome to uh, to ask. But yeah, um, hopefully, hopefully you got some sort of information out this man. Uh, healers are a dying breed right now, and it is incredibly frustrating to be a healer. 
but I think one thing that will keep you going is progress. So if you're able to improve, I feel like that is uh, something that will allow you to enjoy it. And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps you uh, improve in, in some sort of way. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching.